G'day gang, Simo and Ed here once again for another episode of the Fast Line Track Growth Show where we talk all things business and karting. Cool. And this week it's our second part of the customer journey. Yes. The, the touch points you have with your customers as they go through their journey to purchase a go-kart ride. Yeah, it's a critical success factor for every single track out there. If you've not mapped out no. that journey, definitely worth a lot of your time as a business owner to think quite critiquing about the way that you're handling this at the moment and working out how to do it better. We're gonna talk through a few more ideas, but this is really stuff we've just come up with in the last few hours, just mm -hmm. chatting like this morning when we went out and about. Came up with this as an idea. I would be spending quite a few weeks and possibly a couple of months making sure I become the best track in the world to get this right. Because if I get this bit right, our revenues become a lot easier, a lot simpler, that all the efforts I do around my marketing will increase. Because if you get your customer service wrong, it's just one of a host of little areas that will uh, really scupper all your marketing efforts. Mm. I mean, good businesses that do well yeah. usually have mapped out that customer journey and know what to say, what to do at each point during the journey you know that's absolutely right yeah. there's loads of big jobs out there ux and cx is the big word mm. but customer experience user experience mm. is big business at the moment so yeah the big companies really think they spend a lot of time mm. and have lots of big teams really thinking long and hard about this area mm. so let's have right. a warm reception yeah <laughs> so point number four yeah the reception when they walk into your building what happens? Absolutely. What is happening there? How are you going to make this a wow moment for them? Because this is your first chance really to make them shine. Yeah, this is this is their their, their first impression of your business. That's right. So if it's dirty, if no one's there, what a, what impression is that going to give your customer? That's right. Are all the lights working? Mm. Is there one light mm. blinking annoyingly? Mm. I mean, how easy would it be if I've got a group of people that are coming out with me go-karting to just mm. have welcome and my company name or my name mm. or even all the names of everybody under the mm. list all like written mm. out on, it could just be a chalkboard. Yeah. The Chinese are brilliant at this. <laughs> they? Right? Right. Right. Whenever I go and visit suppliers, yeah. I quite often go to the front door and there's a neon sign. Okay. And my line, it's, it's welcome Simon Heap from Fastline. Cool. That's really cool. One place, yeah. and I spend a lot of money with these guys, right? Yeah, yeah. They've taken me to, they take me to their office and yeah. have a look around. Then they took me to their warehouse. And it's, we go up in this lift and the lift doors open. And there was red carpet mm -hmm. put to the office door and all the warehouse workers were standing either side clapping. Oh. I, I kid you not. <laughs> I mean, it sounds really wanky. No, right? it doesn't. But, but do, you know, awesome. do you know how it made me feel? <laughs> I, I'm thinking, oh, wow. Yeah. You really love me as a customer. Yeah, and that, that company is so switched on. Like mm. Those people there are always mm. going to have work because if that experience is just... Mm played out all over the world, everything will just run mm. a lot smoother. That mm. isn't wanky at all, that is mm. awesome. Mm. How amazing would that be to have people there? What about the, this is an idea I introduced mm. to a dentist, my, my, my better half, she's in dentistry, and I was out with one of the dentists mm. one night, we sat having a chat, and he said, he found out what I do for a mm. living. And he said, okay, business coach, what can I do to go and improve my business? And I said, do you have the same, like, person in your practice follow them your customer through the customer journey and he went no why would that be something I want to do and I said how cool would it be for the, the I guess a nurse to turn up and go hello Mr. Heat we've got you booked in he's running a little bit late or ahead of schedule or do you want a cup of tea or something like that and then just have a chat I'll be with you throughout your time here today so if you've got any questions at any moment look at me mm. I'll sort it out and then walk you through the building. Mm. What a great experience that would be. And why not do that at a go-kart track? So somebody turns up and says, is all your party here? Oh, they're all 
start, they're all here, or are they gonna mm. come in in dribs and drabs? Mm. That's great, my name is Ed. I'm gonna be looking after you today. I've arranged for an area where we could all congregate in the customer service area. I'll mm. look after you. And then what we will then do is I will guide you through the whole of the day. If you've got any questions or you need anything at any point in the day, I will look after you. That is the reception I'm looking for mm. in a go-kart track. Mm. Somebody who's responsible for looking after me. That'd be awesome. Mm. So I'd that probably get more sales of drinks too. Well, immediately you're mm. just going to go, oh, well, why the others are coming? Mm. Let me just show you a few areas. The mm. bar area is mm. over here. Mm. That's uh, Simo behind mm. the bar. He doesn't run our bar. He's just a local wino, mm. but he's always <laughs> stepping <behind the> bar. <laughs> <laughs> but now suddenly they're like, okay, the bar's over mm. here. And then what we're going to mm. do is don't worry. We're going to take you through the safety briefing. Mm. This is what we're going to cover today. Um, you can relax. I'm mm. going to look after you. When the others come, I'll just guide you all through. Mm. Is everybody coming here today? Do you want us to mm. go and put any phone calls in to chase up on anybody for you? You just relax. And wow. You just look after your guests while we sort everything out for you. There is always one or two of them, isn't there? Always. And you've got to ring them. Yeah, yeah. Take that hassle off them. Wow. Yeah, let them go and speak with their friends or customers mm. or whoever it is they've decided mm. to bring out with them. Mm. And you take that problem mm. away. Take all the problems off your customer. So they're not having to second guess everything when mm. they're looking around a, a building mm. that's unfamiliar to them. Look after them. Yeah. There's a reception area. Go and get the details off mm. them for insurance purposes. Get them added mm. to the database mm. so they're not going to miss anything over the coming months and years when they start to come back. Mm -hmm. It's all about how you approach this stuff, isn't it? Yep. It starts at reception. Absolutely. Then the next touch point. We all need a safety, safety briefing. briefing. That's right. So that's interesting. It's probably one of the few funnels where they've literally got to definitely mm. going to be a touch point because mm. everybody that's going to step onto mm. that track has had to have a safety briefing. I mean, there, there is a trend in the industry, mm -hmm. and I think it's the right trend, to go towards video briefing. Yeah. Right? That means you've got a consistent briefing time and time again. Yeah, smart. So, so it's smart, and it covers your legal dick. Yeah, yeah. But... You need to make, there needs to be some interaction. Yeah. You know, I, I know ones, so uh, Ralph Schumacher Center, I've been there, right? And they just stand, you You just stand in front of a TV and that's it. And there's nothing that happens afterwards. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, but then there, there's others that you sit in a room and then there's, you, you know, the marshal will come in and ask you a few questions and make sure that you've understood the stuff and have a little bit of a banter with them. Yeah. The, the, uh, the last time I went cars, I still remember the guy, I mean, they did a video, smart, smart idea, you've got to cover yourself, uh, in this, certainly in this modern day and age, uh, it has to be done. But you can choose how you deliver the message. Yeah. So the guy came in and he definitely made sure we were safe, he definitely mm. asked all the questions, we had to give the right answers, it was mm. great, but the demeanour and the attitude was interesting to watch. He, yeah. was, he had enthusiasm, he was like, mm. hi, and he was a big mm. lad. Mm. Right, let's just listen. And I think he turned the chair around and mm. sat down. And and I looked and I thought, okay, that's not quite the right brand for what you just... Don't. I wouldn't have you doing that. Mm. But you could come in mm. and while well, you've got them mm. sort of... You're finding out bits and pieces about the people. Right, I know mm. who the troublemakers are. You know, have that yeah, banter. have that banter. Because, I mean, the, you know, if it's a group, yeah, so yeah. It, your, your customers you took down, there's going to be some, some competition. There's going to be some characters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if while you're getting them all in the room, you sort of uh, get to sort of understand it, and you, you know, you can you, you can have a bit of banter around who's going to win, who's going to cheat, who, who's going to bring up the rear. Yeah, yeah. You two are the most mm. competitive. So, like, I I think I know who's going to win. Right. I'm going to write the name down yeah. on the card. Can you just shout mm. both your names out? Yeah. So that I'll yeah. put it in the envelope. Yep. And I tell you afterwards, yeah. and then I'd have a joke where mm. it's going to be like it could be either of you. Mm. <laughs> so you go, if anybody's going to touch wheels on this track mm. or nudge anybody, mm. probably you two. Yeah. So if anybody else is <coughs> driving around there, mm -hmm. be aware. And you mm. two, don't do that. Uh, you know, but you can have a, a way to word it that there'll be some comedy in there, mm. so that you're covering everything off in a fun way that mm. everybody's joining in mm. the banter, and they've come out feeling like, yay, instead of, phew, I've just passed mm. some exam I didn't know I was going to mm. have to take, which is how we felt mm. when we left, which is great, and we sort of know, we, we're all old enough mm. to understand why that's there, but it's how you deliver these things. Mm. 
So I would spend a long time on safety briefing to make sure that I've got that essential sort of area sorted so that they're safe, sorted so that the customer doesn't feel like they've just had to pass some bloody exam to go into it and to drive a car. Most people have got driving licenses of our or, or, or they've been yeah, yeah. dictated to. So I've got some guy that's half my age telling me how to go and drive a go-kart mm. and I'm like mm. have you got your license son that's right <laughs> how long have you, have you, have you been you off your L's for long <laughs> yeah you weren't even born when I learned to drive <laughs> mate. so I, I, I suggest you uh, you know it's how do they approach it and and equally helps you Helps your staff. Mm. You learned to drive in a Model T4, didn't you? I hit the guy with the flag <laughs> at the front of the car a couple of times, so I had to do a retest. <laughs> Next point. Yeah. Changing area. Now, yeah. this possibly happens before briefing in a lot of places. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we got that mixed up. But hey, ho. Anyway, the changing area. Yeah. Because most tracks here, well, in the UK in particular, mm -hmm. Wearing a race suit is 80, 90% of the tracks probably do it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and other parts of the world, it's it's not, it's, it, they, they don't do this. They do it a bit in some of the European countries, the mm -hmm. more race orientated ones do. Mm -hmm. And it's a really smart idea. Yeah. And it's, it's smart on a couple of levels. A, First of all, you're giving the customer an experience. They're dressing up as a race car driver. Yeah. You, you know, that's that's what you're selling. You're selling the experience to become a race car driver. Yeah, yeah. Right? So if you look the part, you're going to feel the part. Absolutely. You, you know? So that, first of all, it's good for the experience side. Second of all, yeah. it helps you remove some safety issues. Yeah. So... You know, if they've got loose-fitting clothes, yeah. bam, race suit's going to keep that all tidy. If they've got long hair, mm -hmm. they can tuck it down. Yeah, yeah. Underneath. Well, this, and, yeah. And, and it protects you from hot parts of the engine a bit. Well, yeah, absolutely. And, you, you know, you're not going to get your clothes dirty because the mechanic has serviced the carts and put all of the oily parts in the seat, which is, is common practice. <laughs> you, you, you take the engine apart and you put the seats, the, 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 all the parts you've taken off in on the car seat. Please and then you, me. Then, then, you don't, then you don't wipe it. And of course, no. customers going to sit down, going to get oil all over the pants and they're going to look like they've shat themselves. Oh, and no. how are they going to feel? Oh, and also, like, what if it's like you know, a works do and they've just come out to the Christmas party? Mm. And they've just bought a brand new like pair of jeans or yep. even smart trousers yep. or that dress mm. or whatever. Perhaps not the dress, but um, mm. and they've just sat down and just ruined their jeans. Yeah, like just crazy. I think if it was here in the UK, I might just have like a banner that says something like, "This is how Lewis Hamilton would dress if he when he races here." Mm -hmm. And then underneath that, I'd have the picture <coughs> of somebody mm. right wearing the the right equipment mm. front and back. Mm. And then I'd have a mirror. That means that in the changing area, good customer service says. Mm. Um, I don't have to ask again how to dress, like wear it, and I know mm. it's simple stuff, but we'll just show them what it mm. looks like, mm. and also just that banner. This is how Lewis Hamilton would dress him mm. when he races here. Gives you that experience and says, "Well, it's alright for Lewis Hamilton." Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's that little. Yeah. Gen it's a gentle nudge mm. into being compliant for safety mm. reasons. Mm. And also having that experiential like time down at the track, so that'd be like really cool. And and the other thing I think needs to happen, whether this might happen in the reception, mm -hmm. but I think it's a good idea for the track to size up the customer mm -hmm. for the correct gear. So ah, uh, you look like an XL this because as a customer, you've never been there before. You go, what, 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 am I large? Am I extra large? And then nobody's going to want to think they're extra large. They're going to go a size down, aren't they? Maybe. And one of the problems is yes. because you're clothed already underneath, you have to go a size up. Interesting. So if if if, if I'm normally a large, yeah, I'll probably grab an extra large suit. I remember when I was a large. <laughs> the, uh, I don't have the answer immediately on the video, but I might even remove the words small, medium, and large, XL, double XL, whatever it goes up to, 
I might just colour band it. Yeah. And then that way, anybody who's a bit body conscious mm. can just go up and go, what, uh, what do you want? Oh, yep. I need a red. Mm. And then and I'd have a chart that allows mm. them to work out themselves. Because I yep. don't need... I mean, typically, on, and stereotypically, mm. mo- most men would be okay normally. Perhaps some ladies, perhaps a bit more conscious. And I know not all cases, but I don't want to put a female customer of mine in a position where they've got to go and tell some mm. kid half her age what size dress she wears mm. to go and work out. Now, I think they'll probably do it by mm. sides, or, but I'll just give them a chart that mm. allows them to work it out so mm. they don't have to ask. They just walk up and go, can I try um, a red, please? Mm. Or a, yep. I'll try the blue. Yeah, so all, all of our suits are color-coded on the epaulettes to oh, show cool. denote size. But a better way to ask for the size is on the epaulette color, not the not have to shout out, I need a double XL. Yeah, need a red. Yeah, I need, need a, a blue. white. I need a red, yeah, yeah. 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 And then they just go, great. Now yeah. nobody, like, like, they're not looking to try and work that. It's got no reference point for others in the group to start making a joke yeah. of it. So I've now protected my customer from the jokes. <laughs> well, they still may come. But. And, and I think it's just as important to get to, to help them with the helmets too. You, you, you I know, had this problem, didn't uh, I? You know, uh, who, who knows what helmet size they are, unless, they're, unless they ride a motorcycle, and, 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 you know, uh, or go uh, karting regularly. You put them on, they don't feel mm. right to start with. It takes a mm. moment for the old ears to mm. settle into place. Mm. And you're there, and you go, actually, yeah, it's a bit uncomfortable. Okay, I'm, no, it's all right. And it mm. just takes a moment. And those bloody D-rings that I've talked about in that other video... I don't want to be sitting there faffing around with a D-ring setup. Give mm. me, just put a ratchet on it or something that just clips in that I'm now, I'm a safe, good. Right, I just want to go racing now. So don't embarrass me as a customer. Well, I, I mean, the D-rings are very popular. They're, 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 they, they are far more durable than the, the ratchets and that's, that's why they're out there. But it doesn't take long to explain it in the briefing, how yeah. it works. And if, if you're the marshal there at the pit and you can see that Ed's having trouble doing his double D-ring, <laughs> you can, you know, just go over there. Ed, let me, let me help you out there with this. So that's probably a good point to end this video. Cool. And we will continue next week with another... Three, four points. Yeah, I'm going to see your track side in the next video. Yeah. I want to take that from there. If there's anything that we've missed in the run-up in the last couple of videos that you think we should have added to these videos, let us know. We'll have a look mm. at adding that on. We're just running through our thoughts mm. here. But uh, we'd be very interested to see if there's anything that we've missed. But until then... It's goodbye from me. Cheerio from me. <laughs> we'll see you next week. See you in a bit.